today I'm going to show you why the flight sim building hobby is a journey. It is not a destination. So in the beginning, we all start this way. Those of you that have been doing flight simming for quite some many years, you would start with a yoke stuck on a desk. Very, very basic setup at that. You may not even have some rudder pedals. And it may not even be a yoke. It may even be just a joystick. But at the end of the day, that is the starting of your flight sim building journey. At this stage, you're just purely excited to fly. The thrill of getting into an aeroplane, throwing down the runway, taking off, whether that be GA, fast jets, airliners wherever it is the sky's the limit and you are away you've got a peripheral in your yoke or your joystick or whatever it is and you are up and running um, but that is just the start if you are embarking on a sim building journey you get onto a platform like this like youtube and you look around a particular individual on the glide slope got me enthralled in a fully enclosed Cessna 172. I was amazed at how the thing looked and how realistic it could look inside. Full peripheral vision, a fully enclosed shell, full panel in front of you. And I thought to myself, yeah, I've got to do that, I've got to upgrade. And for me, that's where the journey started. I got that itch, I saw what others could do, and off I went. And it, again, it starts with, you know, the, the thinking as to what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to get out of this journey? So you start buying additional peripherals. You might continue to mount them on your desk. For me, as you know, I've got a G1000. So I bought a suite of G1000 PFD and MFD. You buy yourself a set of rudder pedals, which is fundamental. And you've now got a yoke, rudder pedals, and you've got some form of avionics. You can even buy some of the Logitech stuff as well, you know, switch panel, um, radio panel, all sorts of things, you know, trim wheels. As time goes on, you are into this, what I would call this upgrade spiral. It's where your imagination really takes off. It's like, okay, what can I do? Where's my budget going to go? How am I going to do this? How much time have I got to invest? and so on and I spent a hell of a lot of time in Fusion 360 and design there's plenty of videos on that feel free to go and check them out you started with a single monitor you end up with triple monitors you end up going from triple monitors you might decide to go into VR and then you go you know into, into other things as well it just doesn't end and the more you tweak and the more you add the more peripherals you add you, you, you are putting more and more load and more and more emphasis on your PC and that inlays another area, is the PC. So what happens to the PC? Well, the PC, unfortunately, if you want to get a decent amount out of flight simming, that in itself needs to be a pretty hefty machine, particularly if you are running triple screens and you want uh, relatively high settings with smooth frame rates and smooth performance as you go through, be it X-Plane or ECS or whatever, as these evolve, their uh, hardware requirements evolve as well and are more demanding. So you're finding yourself constantly having to upgrade and, and look at modifying your existing computing setup to be able to handle successfully uh, these flight simulators. If you look back on my history, uh, one of the biggest uh, things that I've had initially is I had a fully enclosed shell. Now, as you can see from the picture here, I've got this cut down into a bit of a half shell and this cockpit by virtue of is I guess is a bit more versatile even when you've got all the hardware even when you've got everything there sorted the tweaking is endless I can guarantee you you will never ever have a hundred percent track record in firing up your computer uh, hooking into the peripherals loading into the simulator and pushing play and go it is not, contrary to belief, it is not plug and play. This hobby, with all of the peripherals, software, hardware, getting things to talk to each other, making it all work, is quite complex. A lot of fun, but it's quite complex. And that in itself is both enjoyable, because it certainly keeps you uh, your mind sharp as you learn new things, but extremely frustrating. I've lost count the amount of times that I've had uh, uh, peripherals go down in the middle of live streams. I've lost my controls! Everything's gone! Oh no! 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 
or I've had uh, issues that I just could not resolve. Windows decides to do an update as an example and it completely stuffs up one of your peripherals from working and you've got to go back and bug fix and work out why. All of these challenges are going to be in front of you when you build your own simulator cockpit. The beauty of this hobby as well is that no two simulators are the same. Go onto YouTube or any other social media platform and have a look at the different variations that there are just in my area alone of 172 base simulators all of them are unique in their own right and all of them brilliant in their own right as well because of the innovation and the design that and the i guess the customization that each of the individuals has brought to the table as it relates to the build themselves and they will have many stories to share i'm sure of it and I guess that's the exciting thing about this hobby. You know, there's, it's, it is looking at what other people do and it is admiring what others have got and sharing ideas. The community is fantastic, but it's also having a hobby that you really enjoy and the more you do it, the more passionate you become about getting into a hobby like this. It's fantastic to stand back at the end of the day and watch your sim build evolve and ultimately get built into something that you are extremely proud of case story for you right now my original 172 was dual controlled it, if you look at it, it had a mechanical link at the back very very crude in the sense of rubber bands holding um, the self-centering mechanism together both in pitch and in roll now i've had that for a number of years 3d printed yokes you know switches uh, gauges all running through arduinos to control those dual yokes finally i'm now looking to do an upgrade which will actually get rid of the co-pilot's yoke completely and i'm purchasing a force feedback yoke a major upgrade for me and i'll share that video with you uh, as to what i need to do to this simulator to make that yoke work in coming videos but again it just shows you that the hobby always evolves one of the other things that i've recently done as well is upgrade my graphics card now that's not in at the time of recording this but i've now got a 5090 and why because i'm running 4k triple screens with all of the hardware the PFD, the MFD, all of the avionics and everything else that goes with it. And for me to get consistent high frame rates because I want the experience to be as best as it can be, high frame rates in 4K with fairly high if not ultra settings all the way around, I'm going to have to upgrade my existing graphics card which was not bad at a 3090 up to a 5090 and it won't end there. I can guarantee you that a year or two years from now something else will change. I'm looking into VR. So VR right now is another area. Now my understanding is, and I'm doing research on this right now, a Pimax Crystal Super or a Pimax Crystal Light. These are relatively demanding headsets if you're wanting to be in a flight simulator and you want your experience to be, you know, highly detailed, you know, with high graphical settings all round. Whilst I used to compromise a bit earlier on, I don't tend to compromise now as, as the sim hobby has evolved. And that's another thing as well. You're always sort of chasing some form of perfection in what you do. You're always having a look at something in your build that you know that you will tweak later on or that you will modify later on or you, you will do something later on with it. You will, you will find a way to have a look at different things that you can put into your simulator. The message I'm trying to say to you is, it just never ends. It will never really end. Uh, I, I guess maybe that's a bit flippant to say that because I guess you could make it end. But, but the wants that are there will always be there. Another area to consider, motion. There are simulators out there where people have full motion rigs underneath the main frames and getting, you know, pitch your roll, all sorts of different things in, in, in motion. Now, I don't have a motion rig as such, but trust me, I've been thinking about it. So again, this is another area where you think to yourself, well, this, this just may never end. So here's the big secret with all of this. This sim building hobby that you are either in or you are considering getting into, well, one thing I can say from someone that has done it, it is fantastic. You won't regret it. Will you burn some money along the way? Absolutely. And be prepared for that. But you will have so much fun, I can guarantee it. It's a passion that will continue to grow with you. Manufacturers coming out with new products all the time. 
all the time. I used to have a set of uh, Logitech, formerly Cytec rudder pedals. Were okay as entry level pedals, but again, I saw an upgrade in Turtle Beach cost me three times the amount almost so I upgraded to a set of Turtle Beach Velocity 1 rudder pedals in the last couple of years. Did I need them? No. Did I want them because they felt better and they would give me a better experience? Yes. And so there's my point. Upgrades that you continue to uh, play around with and do as your sim hobby evolves. Well there's some reasons why this sim hobby is fantastic but it's evolving. It is a journey, it is not a destination. You're going to love it. If you're already on it, let me know in the comments down below. If you're considering being on it, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you found this video of some value and I look forward to catching up with you on the next one. Bye for now. And that's where the itch starts.